Our top focus story is that big cabinet reshuffle that's likely to take place tomorrow evening. What we are now being told is that Rajiv Pratap Rudi is the one who's already quit from the cabinet, but there are others who have offered to quit. Kalraj Mishra, Uma Bharti, Mahindra Pandey and Sanjeev Balyan have offered to resign. Piyush Goel and Dharmendra Pradhan are likely to be elevated in the reshuffle. There is reprieve for the Union Railways Minister Suresh Prabhu. So to say, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is in favour of giving him another chance. On Thursday, BJP President Amit Shah met Prime Minister Narendra Modi. There were eight Union Ministers who were present in this meeting. The Prime Minister is believed to have discussed new names to be included in the Cabinet. So what all do we know at this point of time? Uma Bharti, she's offered to quit citing health reasons. But the inside story is the Prime Minister is not happy with the progress of the Namami Gange project. That's his key pet project. Sanjeev Balyan, he also may be axed perhaps because of some of his speeches. Fagan Singh Khulaste, MOS Health, he's likely to be axed because of poor performance. Radha Mohan Singh, the Union Agriculture Minister, he is likely to be shifted, is what sources are telling India today. Menka Gandhi, uh, Women and Child Development Minister, she is also likely to be shifted. Suresh Prabhu, he was on notice as the Union Railways Minister, he would offered to quit, but he may be given another chance. I quickly want to cut across to India today's Polomi Saha for more on this. Polomi, Let's take this step by step. Let's first talk about those who are likely to be axed. Then subsequently, we'll talk about those who are likely to be given a leg up. But tell us more, tell us more about those who could face the door, who could be shown well, the door. Uh, there, are, there are a couple of uh, ministers who are already uh, facing uh, the axe. So we know that uh, already uh, Rajiv Pratap Rudi has uh, submitted his uh, resignation. So he is definitely on his way out. Then there is, of course, Mahindra Nath Pandey, who has been given charge of Uttar Pradesh BJP. So uh, he definitely will not be a part of the union cabinet anymore. And then, of course, uh, there are ministers like Kazaj Mishra, who is 75 years old. So he's crossed that age mark, uh, which is an unwritten rule within the Bhartiya Janta Party that after a certain age, uh, uh, they will not uh, give you uh, positions of authority and uh, responsibility. So. He might be accommodated as a governor, is the word, because there are seven uh, vacant uh, governor positions as well that need to be filled uh, simultaneously. Uh, so that is uh, one of the opportunities that he might have, but, but he might not be part of the union cabinet anymore. Then there are ministers, of course, uh, who definitely uh, are not uh, performing very well. The report cards uh, do not speak uh, uh, very well of them. So that includes, of course, uh, Sanjeev Balyan, who is from Western UP. And then, of course, uh, there is Ms. Krishna Raj as well uh, from uh, the Ministry of Women and Child Development, who is MOS in the Ministry of Women and Child Development, as well as Mr. Pagan Singh Kulase, who is MOS uh, Health as well. Again, someone whose performance uh, is uh, uh, something which is urged the Prime Minister as well, reports uh, saying that he did not uh, do the rounds of his ministry enough, he did not... Uh, uh, you know, uh, take on the responsibilities of his ministry enough. People did not hardly saw him inside his ministry as well. The health ministry practically being run by uh, the minister, uh, J.P. Nadda, and of course his uh, deputy, his other deputy, Ms. Anipriya Patel. So these are some of the ministers who are definitely uh, not in the good books of uh, the prime minister. In terms so of seven, been very hard on them. Seven to eight of, ministers, Polomi, could be on their way out, but there are some ministers who it is said are performing extremely well. They could get a leg up. We know of Piyush Goel. Um, we know of Dharmendra Pradhan. There is some talk of Nirmala Sitaraman. Tell us more about who are the ministers who are likely to get a leg up. There are some ministers, which includes, of course, uh, Miss, uh, 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 which includes, of course, uh, Mr. Piyush Goel, uh, Mr. Dharmendra Pradhan as well. Uh, these names have been doing the rounds uh, from the previous cabinet reshuffle itself, uh, from the uh, the last time uh, the cabinet uh, rejig happened. In terms of elevation, because uh, the report cards suggest and the buzz uh, around them suggests that they have been performing very well. Their ministries are doing a very good job. And the Prime Minister is quite satisfied in the way that they're taking on their responsibilities. Uh, of course, uh, there is Mr. Prakash Javikar as well, 
who was to surprise the elevation to cabinet rank in the last uh, uh, region uh, when yes. he was moved, in fact, uh, uh, to the HRD ministry after Ms. Smriti Irani was moved out of the ministry and given textiles. So he has been performing very well as well. And he might get a larger responsibility and a larger role as well, is what we're hearing. Mr. Nitin Stay Dutton, with again, me. Stay with me. I want to now bring in India Today's managing editor, Rahul Kamal, who's been tracking developments very, very closely on this big story. Rahul, Several ministers, including Arun Jaitley, holding key portfolios, uh, you know, defense and finance, so Smriti Rani, INB and textile, uh, Harshwardhan, science, technology and environment, Nitin Gadkari. Could Nitin Gadkari be this overarching transport minister? Is that what is being thought about, Rahul? You know, Nitin Gadkari is seen in BJP and RSS circles as somebody who's a doer. As somebody who's been able to make a difference, push through the bureaucracy and get files moving and get action going on the ground. And therefore, he is a top contender to take over from the railways ministry, uh, from Suresh Prabhu in the railways ministry. The one thing that Nitin Gadkari has been telling those who've been asking him about the possibility of him taking over as railways minister is that, you know, does he even have enough time, he wonders, to be able to make a difference. The one thing he's concerned about, quite naturally, is that the next time there is a train accident and this time it's on his watch, people will be upset with him, which is not quite the way it is with shipping or with transport. So that is something that has been in Nitin Gadkari's mind. However, naturally, he hasn't said no, and if the challenge is presented to him, he will take it up. It will be a tough task because a lot of the problems with the Indian Railways Gaurav are legacy issues and they will take years to resolve and therefore these accidents the BJP and the government realize are not going to end anytime soon whoever the minister is will have to feel the heat but on the larger issue Gaurav of you know what's the messaging here the messaging is one of a government that is driven by performance we know on good authority that one very senior minister who's now in a constitutional post was given the responsibility of looking at every single engagement every single day every single program every single achievement of every modi minister that detailed uh, data set that detailed analysis was said to the prime minister the prime minister's office has been looking at the performance of all their ministers and this will also reflect the Prime Minister's own performance appraisal of who he thinks has done well, who he thinks hasn't done well. Remember, Skill India was one of his pet projects, is also the Naomi Gange project. Rajiv Rudi has already stepped down. Mabharti, citing uh, grounds of ill health, is uh, has offered to resign as well. Uh, from what we're given to understand, the Prime Minister wasn't satisfied with the performance of these two projects. So, a lot is being kept in mind and I think the one thing the Prime Minister is very clear about from what it seems is that he has to hit the polls in 2018-2019 yes. with something to show to the people. You know, he says all this is fine, people must feel the Modi difference. That's the message he wants to send out and any man, minister who hasn't been able to contribute to that will find himself on the way out come the 2nd of September. Okay, Rahul, a lot is also being talked about. Uh, will we have a new defense minister? And, uh, uh, you know, can we even speculate at this stage, given the secrecy uh, around which uh, the prime minister and the BJP president operate, who the new defense minister could be? So let me tell you what I know and let's leave aside what I don't. Uh, we know on good authority that uh, finance and defense minister Arun Jaitley has had conversations with uh, the Prime Minister in which he told him that this is getting too much uh, for one person to handle. I'm not being able to you know, give it as much as I could. He even suggested two names. The Prime Minister heard those two names and told him that this is not going to work. So that's one thing that's happened. The other thing that we know uh, that's happened is that Arun Jaitley speaking to journalists uh, yesterday when he was asked about you know, how long will you be Defence Minister and Finance Minister for, he said that I hope not for very long. So that's something the uh, Arun Jaitley has said on record. So he hopes it won't be for very long. I also know that the Prime Minister's office is actually quite comfortable with the way Arun Jaitley has been performing as Defence Minister. They believe that he's taken several key decisions that have uh, eased the bottlenecks in the Defence Ministry. And remember, one of the biggest problems in Gaurav, you cover the Ministry of Defence much more than I do, uh, the one of the biggest problems with anything that the MOD wants to do, especially when it comes to a weapons purchase, is that there is some Babu in the Ministry of Finance who puts a spoke into it, you know, raises a question, sends the file back, and then it goes in an infinite loop. That's one of the biggest problems the Ministry of Defence has. 
Now there have been at least two instances that we know of recently where Def Defence Minister Arun Jaitley has recommended something about a particular project which Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and his bureaucrats had previously stalled. So that led to some mirth as you can quite imagine in government circles about now he's pushing for it but the reality is uh, uh, given the threat with China especially at this time a lot of much delayed acquisition processes need to be speeded up and Arun Jaitley to his credit has been able to do so. Yes. It's obviously taking a huge physical toll on his body because a lot of the Ministry of Defence projects have very fixed timings in terms of which event happens at what time so he's spinning like a top he'd ideally like a breather so he can focus on the Ministry of Finance that's what he prefers we don't know just yet what the final decision is. Okay, uh, you know, you and I were talking about messaging just a short while back. So, apart from a Rajiv Pratap Rudi or an Uma Bharti, with a Fagan Singh Kulaste or a Sanjeev Balyan, uh, what is the message that the Prime Minister uh, could be sending out there? Also, what messaging when it comes to people like Piyush Goel and Dharmendra Pradhan, Rahul? You know, these are the stars of this government. The reality is that Piyush Goyal, and he was a rather unheralded uh, spokesperson, not that well known, and people quite weren't fully certain when he took over about how strong his performance would be. But if you see what he's been able to do in power, in terms of easing bottlenecks in the system, ensuring that things move fast, running the system like a CEO would, he's virtually been the CEO of the power ministry and he's been very quick, he's been responsive, industry loves him, his public sector units love him, so he has been able to deliver, he's seen as a man of action, he understands finance, he's got good links with business, he's able to get things done, so that's really gone in his favour. Dharmendra Pradhan also has been seen as someone who's done very well, remember, the other thing with Dharmendra Pradhan is, he is their Bhavi Mukhya Mantri, he is the man they hope will be Chief Minister of Orissa when the assembly elections happen there, so giving him a leg up is also in some senses, I mean A he's done well, but also in some senses sending out a political message to the people of Risa that this is our man, we believe he will be your man, we believe he's done really well and we hope you back him. So that's the other message when it comes to Dharmendra Pradhan that they hope to send out as well. Okay, Rahul stay with me uh, for a moment. Arun Jaitley both as Union Defence Minister and Union Finance Minister. So the advantage as Rahul was just pointing out may well be that a project that's cleared by Defence Ministry is now no longer stalled by the Finance Ministry. But what is Arun Jaitley saying about this? Let's listen in to the man himself. Simple question is how long do you think you'll continue wearing that, that, that hat? <laughs> At least I hope not very long. <laughs> okay. So Rahul, uh, stay with me for a moment. I also want to bring in Polami Saha for more on this story. Polami, Radha Mohan Singh, it's his, it's his birthday today. Uh, as Agriculture Minister, there is some speculation that he could also be moved around. So while we also talk about BJP ministers, tell me more uh, about the allies, the JDU and the AIA DMK. Where do they come in in this new rejig, Polami? That's right. Uh, what we're hearing is that the JDU is slated to get at least two berths in uh, this cabinet uh, rejig after the JU formally, uh, JDU, I beg your pardon, formally entered uh, the NDA again. Uh, they could, in fact, uh, the names during the rounds, of course, uh, could be the Rajya Sabha uh, member of parliament and uh, the gentleman slated to lead the party in the Rajya Sabha after Mr. Sharad Yadav has been sidelined by the party and has been removed as the parliamentary party leader in the Rajya Sabha, Mr. RCP Singh. He could be slated for a ministerial berth as also there is a uh, uh, there are uh, there are Lok Sabha MPs, uh, a couple of them who could possibly uh, be one of the others who occupy uh, that ministerial berth. Both MOS positions which are being offered uh, to the JDU at the moment. So two for the JDU and what we're hearing that at least two uh, for uh, the AIDMK as well. We know that last evening itself, uh, Dr. Tambi Durai, Deputy Speaker of uh, the Lok Sabha, in fact had a meeting with uh, party president of the Bharatiya Janata Party, Amit Shah, at his residence here in New Delhi in order to finalize uh, the details of who will be joining the union cabinet from uh, the AI DMK. So two names, of course, that of Dr. Tambi Durai and V. Maitrian doing the rounds already. There was some amount of uh, speculation as to whether the AI DMK would uh, make it on board or not, especially uh, going uh, by the turmoil within the state itself and uh, the position of the government being threatened with at least 19 MLAs uh, writing uh, to the governor, withdrawing support uh, to the OPS uh, EPS uh, government.
government in okay. Tamil Nadu and demanding a floor test as well. But it looks like that the AIDMK is definitely going to be on board this cabinet rejig. Okay. Rahul, of course, the opposition is hitting out at the Narendra Modi government uh, saying that the timing of this cabinet reshuffle or uh, speculation of the reshuffle happening at a time when the RBI has spoken about the demonetization and the fact that uh, you know it, it's not led to the gains that the Prime Minister had talked to the nation about. Well, uh, the government has been looking very carefully at the reactions to demonetization, uh, the RBI data coming in uh, and the day after that, the data on GDP figures also coming in that hasn't gone well. Obviously, no one is pleased with the kind of reactions that they've received. They've been looking at that very carefully. They've been trying their best to try and present what they believe are the positives from demonetization uh, to their constituency. but. It naturally, given all that's happened, got over the last 48 hours. It has been a, uh, it's been a tricky ride. There's no dispute about that. They realise that, and in some senses, as the word about the cabinet reshuffle comes in, uh, they're hoping that the narrative will also change because the more there is a discussion on demonetisation, uh, naturally, that from the perspective of the government's media managers, that's not ideal. They'd like as quickly as possible uh, for the narrative to come to something that they believe they're on stronger grounds on. Okay. Keep tracking this story. Rahul Kawal and Pallavi Saha, I will come back to you, both of you, for more on this cabinet reshuffle. I have to take a quick break at this stage. Up next, lots of big stories that we've been tracking here on India Today. Stay with us. Welcome back. There is a sensational new twist in the Malegao blast investigation. A senior officer of the military intelligence a deputy director general of military intelligence has said that there was pressure from the manmohan singh government the upa government to wind up investigations quickly brigadier raj kumar was deputy director general military intelligence he has hit out even at army officers in this case there are two things he said which are of significance one he said lieutenant colonel Purohit had no access to rdx and the maharashtra ats could not get corroborative evidence and two he said there was pressure from the upa government to speed up investigations in this case he's also said that the army officer a full colonel rank officer of military intelligence who was appointed in this case to act as a nodal officer between the army and the police exceeded his brief and participated in the torture of Lieutenant Colonel Purohit. Let's quickly listen in. This is an India Today exclusive. The report which was prepared by the DG MI uh, uh, is a bit vague about uh, you know the accusation against Colonel Purohit that he supplied the, uh, uh, the RDX used in the Maligaon blast case. What was the uh, finding? See, we have uh, threadbare uh, gone into the details about this case. Mm. Uh, the RDX, since we army is very sensitive to this particular allegation. Mm. Uh, I had written that time to the Northern Command, mm -hmm. uh, based in Udhampur, uh, to ascertain his postings and if he had any access to uh, RDX, mm -hmm. uh, which they uh, told us that uh, at no stage Prohit was, uh, though he was posted there in Shirnagar mm -hmm. for a while. But he was not associated in handling of uh, RDX. It is given only to very, very selected people for right. a particular operation, right? Not to everyone. Right. But the ETS uh, report suggests that you know he was the one who volunteered to supply the uh, uh, RDX. See, Prohit uh, has very categorically told that he had not supplied it. Uh -huh. Nor there are any official proof or uh, our investigation suggests that. Uh -huh. Certainly. Uh, Prohit has boasted in one of the meetings mm -hmm. the, that the RDX was required. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, uh, I will get it. You know, normally being from army, mm -hmm. he boasted there in the meeting. That is what we have heard, mm -hmm. though there is nothing to corroborate that. Okay, but you find. And India Today's Pankaj Khelkar spoke to Lieutenant Colonel Purohit's wife, Aparna Purohit, who insists that the revelations made by the brigadier indicate that her husband may have been falsely implicated in a terror case. She said the truth will come out. Let's listen in to this India Today exclusive.
two former army officers now coming in open and t while talking to India today have somewhere expressed that there was pressure from then government in the inquiry that was conducted against Prasad Purohit. What does Aparna Purohit, wife of Lieutenant Colonel Prasad Purohit want to say about this? Let's talk to her. Aparna ji, what would you like to say that now army officers are coming out in open and they are now garnering up courage to say that indeed there was pressure from somebody during that period to implicate Prasad Purohit in this case. I would not comment on that because I would really not know and uh, so but I believe that the truth will come out uh, someday or the other and uh, also the way he was handed over on a different FIR not on the Maligao FIR he was uh, uh, arrested uh, based on the FIR uh, of forgery um, in uh, which was filed in Pune uh, so uh, he, he was handed over on a different FIR besides uh, he was taken and directly handed over to the ATS uh, wherein he was tortured uh, in the ATS custody so the even the uh, and he was not allowed to report to his unit so um, with all this I feel it is quite a suspicious uh, I mean all this becomes very suspicious about uh, the way uh, you know um, things went on at that time Doing in the inquiry court of inquiry that was conducted the northern command corps based at udhampur they they also gave a clean sheet to prasad that rds cannot be transported from j and k and all the allegations that have been leveled means this proof that all all the allegations that have been leveled against prasad that he transported rdx and that was used by him and all of his accomplices in the Malagao blast uh, the allegations were like that, that uh, he uh, got the RDX from JNK and used it in uh, Maligao uh, blast. Uh, but the basically, uh, even the army has uh, uh, clearly uh, said that it is impossible for any person to uh, get the um, RDX from JNK because there are set procedures uh, 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 when a person comes back from uh, JNK to the uh, uh, to any other part uh, of India, whether he is. Uh, uh, traveling for his posting or uh, even for his uh, holidays also. This is sensational. A former senior officer of military intelligence saying Prasad Purohit perhaps may have been implicated. That's something that his wife is also now saying. We'll track developments on that story very closely. Up next, Supreme Court may have banned triple talaq, but one of the five crusaders for this Ishra.